So now let's go ahead and actually do some transaction here. As I mentioned earlier um, uh, in the webinar agenda, I said we're gonna focus on selling first and then we're gonna finish this up in the purchase invoicing. So I'm gonna tie in the selling aspect, the warehouse management aspect, the purchasing aspect, as well as the accounting aspect of it, okay? So as you can see, by the way, I, I, I filtered this, so I'm missing some of the information I need. So I'm just gonna clear the filter there so that I can have access to this order number. So I'm gonna open up this order because that's the one I wanna work with for a company called Al Distributed. Um, this sales order here, uh, I've got the important information I need. Um, uh, I'm selling it to Al Distribute and the date that they, they um, asked for it was uh, November 18th, et cetera. The PO number is 88. Now on the line here, you will notice that I have an item already, which is a ball cap. I haven't um, updated the quantity yet, which is what I'm gonna do for you during this, this show and tell and this transactional demo. However, I wanna quickly show you and go back to what I was trying to show you earlier. You will notice that as soon as I've got this record highlighted here on the navigation pane here on the fact box, you will notice that the software in real time, this is very important, um, is telling us that I've got a total available inventory quantity physically on hand of 10. However, you will notice that the actual item available, available is actually uh, two. So now watch what happens if I drill down on that, on the two, okay? What the system will tell me is as of today, I have 10, but over the, over the past X number of days prior to today, I've had a demand for that of five, and a demand of that of three. So what does that tell you from an inventory management perspective? It tells you that the software is tracking these in real time. And then it will also allow you to be able to drill down easily and to say, yeah, you know what, that, that order there for three for at Art Planto. Let me take a look at what that document looks like. Imagine being able to open that up and seeing what that record is. And perhaps if you wanted to, uh, and wanted to find out if there's any way we can adjust the delivery of this to a different date, because of course they've, they're asking for it on November 10th, you can pick up the phone and say, hey, if you want to ask them for a favor, see if we can delay this order about a week so you can supply that next order. The point being is it's not necessarily what you're going to do with it, but it's, it's giving you visibility of what, what the, the demands are for a particular inventory. So what I'm gonna do right now, given the fact that I do know that I have only two available, is I'm gonna demonstrate to you to real, real time what happens there. So on purpose, I'm gonna put a quantity of five here. Obviously, clearly, if you do the math, you're probably thinking, yes, I'm down minus three. So in fact, as soon as I do that, you will notice that it's telling me that I'm down to minus three. So obviously, if this I need this right now, there's nothing I can do to ship it out. But of course, um, hopefully there's some lead time available to you. However, in addition to inventory availability and management, you will also notice at the top here, the software will provide some notification to you. So if you're not paying attention to this, let's face it, oftentimes you're not looking, at least the software is telling you, uh, or first of all, A, in this case, it's telling you that you have two notifications. One is uh, the, the fact that they're over the credit limit. So on purpose, I made sure they're over the credit limit. So if I go down here, you can see that they are over the credit limit. I also want you to appreciate that, yes, we can continue creating the sales order, um, but if you do have an approval function, the approval function turned on, it will not allow you to ship or invoice this order. So it won't stop you from creating it, but will stop you from shipping it. So, which is very important because you don't want to stop the process, but you have to turn on the approval process. You can see here, there's an approval function here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drop that down and you will see that I now also have another, um, uh, an error or not error, a notification saying, hey, Oliver, you don't have anything on hand. If I show the detail here, that's basically the same screen that you saw previously, uh, similar to it, and um, I can see what I've got on demand, okay? So now I've minus two. Now, here's the best part. From here, I can easily create a purchase order for that. So I realized that for most companies, you're going, Oliver, that's not, the right thing to do. I would never say create a purchase order. Well, what I want to explain to you is this is just my quick way of being able to show you the integration with uh, demand orders, such as the sales orders, availability and inventory, and be able to integrate that with purchasing. However, I do understand, and the software does have a functionality 
for you to be able to go on a daily basis at the end of the day or at the end of the week and be able to, as a purchasing manager, to ask the software, hey, hey, Business Central, I've got all these demands. I know I'm down on quantity on hand based on demand orders from sales or from, from raw material consumption from a manufacturing perspective, or perhaps you just want to go through your weekly status uh, purchasing. So there is a much more advanced feature for that, but of course that's a little bit more comprehensive. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and run this function just so that you can see the quick integration with purchasing. Um, as soon as I do that, it allowed me to create a purchase order. So now if I wanted to buy five, three, or 10, I can do that. So in this case, I'm going to go ahead and say 10. Now, if you're wondering, so how did it know all over what, um, uh, a vendor number it should allocate that purchase order to. In the background, you can default a vendor number on top of your um, uh, uh, item card or the SKU or the item master for the ball cap. However, the software also has an inherent function that allows you to have other approved vendors that you can purchase from. This just happens to be the default. If I wanted to change this on the header, I can do that based on lead time, of course. So now that I've put 10 in here, what we're gonna do here is we're just gonna finish this process up and actually receiving it so that we have enough quantity to supply that demand order. So the next thing I'm gonna do, outside of the fact that you probably uh, can assume that you know, more than likely I will probably take this purchase order and send it uh, either through snail mail, through fax, but most importantly, it is integrated to Outlook so that you can send this as a PDF document directly to your vendor once you've set up their email address and so on. So we're just gonna skip that step. However, what we're gonna do here is show you integration and introduction, a very quick introduction to warehouse management. So as so you can see, I have this purchase order number, I'm gonna release it. And let's remember that's purchase order number nine, okay? So I'm gonna release it. By releasing it, I'm locking it down so that the warehouse department can see it. Why is that important? Because if it's open, it makes sense that they're not expecting it, right? But if it's released, I know that they should be expecting at some point. That's all part of the workflow and the not notifications and the software. Now, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna press escape in here, escape, and I'm gonna press escape all the way up here. Just gonna all the way up to the main screen. So I'm not gonna switch around different screens here, but I can assure you the warehouse team will have a much more um, simplified version of what you're seeing here. However, Let's do the scenario of that purchase uh, coming in through the back door, ring, ring, the doorbell rings, we open the dock door um, and this uh, truck comes in, they've got this package, this pallet, and it's uh, specific to that PO number which is created. So how do we do that? So what Warehouse will do is they'll create a receiving document and they're gonna identify which location they wanna receive that into, which is your main location. And by the way, just a quick introduction to more advanced warehousing. We do have the ability to have as many locations as you like, whether it's totally physical, different physical addresses, or you just want to divide your existing warehouse in the back into multiple locations. Uh, we also have bid management, but we're not going to use that at this point to keep it simple. Um, so why are we creating a warehouse receipt? From a warehouse management perspective, this is a much more simplified point of view of receiving purchase orders. In addition, from a security standpoint, it doesn't really make any sense for the uh, warehouse department to be interacting with a purchase order. All they care about is to go into the source doc, get source document function here, look at the piece of paper, or the bill of lading that came in from uh, the supplier or the manufacturer, and uh, we're gonna grab that. And what that will do is it'll pull that purchase order to the warehouse receipt. What's most important to note here is, of course, you can be doing this anytime in the morning or in the afternoon, et cetera. However, imagine for a moment that that tr truck actually delivered multiple purchase orders from multiple vendors, or it could be the same vendor, multiple vendors. So if you're wondering, can I pull multiple purchase orders even from different vendors onto the same purchase order? The answer is yes. Of course, we make that easy for you. If you're also wondering, does the software have integration to the barcoding? Yes, there are a lot of barcoding applications that you can add to the software as an add-on, and that's something we can help you as well. With. Now let's go ahead and actually uh, do the receiving here. Again, if you uh, if if you recall, I mentioned to you earlier that you can access this off of a mobile device or a tablet. So imagine you're walking around, literally inspecting what you're receiving and doing this in real time, even before the 
the driver leaves the door, right? Um, your warehouse. So that's a lot of advantage to you from a remote access perspective. Now, I'm not actually gonna do this. I'm just gonna mention it for you, right? So under the uh, post in here, what I'm actually gonna do is I'm just gonna post it. By posting it in real time, I'm now adding 10 more units for each into inventory, which means it will allow me to, to uh, ship that sales order I have earlier. But I also wanna mention to you that the software inherently in the background does have integration with putaways. So if you wanna do a putaway where you do receive it in real time, but you want someone in the warehouse to actually put that away in a specific bin location by aisle, by shelf number, by bin number, you can do that, but it's just not what we're gonna to cover today. So I'm gonna go ahead and receive that and I'm gonna post the receipt. What will happen in the receipt as soon as I do that is it will automatically connect to the purchase order and receive that purchase order. So why is that important? So it's important because if I go back to that purchase order number nine, okay, and I open that up. And if you're wondering, oh, when did it, I have this PO and we need to ship that out today. I wonder if it's been received. Without having to talk to the warehouse department, you can go in here under the, under the purchase order related warehouse and you can get, go into, sorry, order, uh, so navigate receipts. You can go in here and see how many times this PO has been received. Of course, there's only one, there's no back order, we can see that. But here's the best part. I'm not actually gonna open that document but I'm gonna show you the accounting aspect that's very important inherent to the application to tie it all into accounting for you. Not only did we post immediately a receiving, it generated a GL entry, and I'm gonna show that very shortly. It also updated the quantity on hand. So as, you, as I drill down on that, you'll notice that today on this receiving number internal 221, just calling the last three digits, we received that for a quantity of 10 and an expected cost of $100 because the per unit cost is $10. So what that immediately tells you is that in real time, it's affecting inventory so you can ship right away. Most importantly, from an accounting perspective, if I drill down to the GL entries, you will notice that it's got the debits and credit entries. What are they? Well, 2250 happens to be my accrual account from a liability perspective and 1401 was my accrual account for inventory. So now just imagine for a second that you never received this invoice at the end of the month. Do you have to worry about collect, uh, calling the vendor for this? Well, you don't need to, you've already accrued it. So it's one less thing you have to worry about. Now, what I also wanna uh, uh, accentuate here, just so I'm gonna skip it later today, is that once the invoice arrives, whether next week, next month, next year, it doesn't matter when, this accrual will remain in place. But once it comes in, it will reverse this accrual and record what the cost is at the time. If it's the same grade, if it's different, the system will adjust it for you.